Hey everyone, it's Pacific, and welcome to SCP Archives Season 4. As a quick reminder, this season will be a lot shorter and a little different from our usual show. Instead of a weekly anthology, this will be a 12-episode series all about one specific SCP anomaly in southern Montana. While the show is written in such a way that you can jump in at any episode, for the best listening experience, we suggest that you start here, on Part 1, 2021. Don't worry, we will be back with our regular weekly anthology content starting this May. Second, uh, over the last few months, I've been slowly revamping our entire Patreon. Uh, The biggest and coolest change is we've switched over to monthly postcards. So any new and subscribing patrons between February 1st and February 28th are eligible for March's postcard. And in March, it'll be the same for April's and so on and so on and so on. But if you sign up today uh, at $10 or above, in addition to a kick-ass postcard, you can also get some buttons and some stickers. This is a pretty new format for us, so supplies are limited, uh, so sign up quickly. And third, even though the show has been away for a little bit, uh, we've been hard at work. In case you missed last week's feed drop, uh, I recently launched a true crime podcast called Insidious Inspirations. I'm not a huge fan of true crime, but I am a huge fan of horror movies. So, Nicole Goodnight, Addison Peacock, and I set out with the intention of discovering the true stories behind all of our favorite horror movies. The first episode is all about Hannibal Lecter and the true story that inspired the Cannibal Doctor. And this week's episode is about Robert the Doll, which in turn inspired Chucky, the killer doll. If you love horror movies, and if you love Nicole Goodnight's uh, absolutely incredible voice and Addison Peacock's writing, this is the show for you. So, go check it out. You can find Insidious Inspirations wherever you listen to podcasts. I've been rambling for long enough, and it's been a very long time since our last episode. So, without further ado, Episode 1 of Project Serapis. Enjoy! Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Provisional SCP. Object class. Keter. Note. This is a pre-containment report into the anomaly hereafter referred to as SCP. In anticipation of subsequent containment or neutralization efforts to be informed by this report. Should an effort to contain SCP ensue, the containment area required will be 200 by 15 by 12 meters and constructed of steel reinforced concrete. Any additional containment procedures depend on further observation of SCP-6889. It may be preferable to contain it on site and build a containment vessel around it, rather than attempt to bring SCP into an existing facility. The investigation into SCP was precipitated by a report on anomalous events in an area of southern Montana known as Shibbets Vale. This forested area is to the south of the Morning Cloak Mountain Range and includes the Whitetail River which feeds into and drains from Lake Episawa. The location has seen some previous use, including a campground and skiing resort, but is currently uninhabited. These anomalies were believed to emanate from Lake Episawa. Mobile Task Force IOTA 28, codename Screaming Seabees, was dispatched to perform field engineering duties under the cover story of a geological survey team looking for natural gas fields. The members of IOTA 28 were accompanied by 12 C-Class personnel, several pieces of earth-moving equipment, and a small cache of explosives. A channel was dug connecting points of the Whitetail River upstream and downstream of the lake. This caused the lake to be bypassed and gradually drained. MTF IOTA 28 remained on station during this process to monitor any further anomalous activity, but reported none. The remains of a six-berth boat were noted when the lake was around 70% drained, along with a wrecked pickup truck 
and large amounts of cut logs from the region's past logging activities. Nineteen days after the draining began, an opening was spotted just above the surface, leading to a cave system under the ground eastwards of the lake. MTF Iota 28, comprising four members trained in combat engineering, entered the cave. They were I-28 Alpha, Urbanic, Ranking Officer, I-28 Beta, Lynch, I-28 Delta, Abbott, and I-28 Gamma, Weiss. They were accompanied by a C-Class, Lopez, who was trained in caving safety. The data transmitted from IOTA-28 Delta's field recording device was recovered. Being transmitted from underground, this data was partial and had to be reconstructed, and no other team member's recordings could be recovered. This is I-28 Delta, Abbott. Testing. Testing. Good. Levels are green. We all good? Recording. Doubt we'll get a signal out, though. Weiss? Sure, recording's on. No control gets off on two hours of footsteps. Don't start. We haven't even got our feet wet. Lopez, how's it looking? I'd rather have the gear to rig up lights as we go. Put in some permanent guidelines. We don't have the time. We're here to find whatever's down here, not map the place out. The rock looks good, but if the system goes much lower, it'll be underwater. No way are we equipped for that. Then we'll turn back. Until then, we're a go. I want weapons stowed and safeties on. Down here, you're more likely to kill one of us with a ricochet than hit anything. I thought we were looking for something spooky. If we have to shoot it, then I'll give the order. Till then, fingers off triggers. Oh, Jesus Christ. Remind me why we even bring you? Because I'm the explosives guy, and you couldn't tell plastic from Play-Doh. We looking good, Abbott? We're negative for radiation and toxins. Good to go. You think we're gonna run into radiation down here? We assume we're gonna run into everything. Move out. Stick close. Lopez, lead the way. The team moves into the cave system. I-28 Delta's recording system was both audio and visual, but no video data could be reconstructed. The team moves slowly and with difficulty, with C-Class Lopez directing them through the narrow and partially flooded passageways. They encounter several dead ends. Signal triangulation puts them approximately 300 meters east of Lake Epasawa and 15 to 30 meters underground. The cave system descends gradually, prompting concerns the way ahead will be flooded. A lot of tree roots down here. Is that normal? Through solid rock? No. Ah, great, we've got to cut our way through. Not enough we're underground, we have to be in a bloody jungle too. Lynch, you're the muscle. Get this crap out of our way. I'll just blast a sodden path for us. And bring the whole place down on our heads? Looks solid enough to me. Then the pressure wave will kill us instead. That's progress. We're through. Shit. My arm's all cut to hell, though. What is this stuff? Hey. It opens up just ahead. See? It's a cavern. Got stalactites and stuff. Stalagmites. Which is which again? Hey, he's right. This is one beautiful gallery. We got... We got plants down here. That's not right. You get animals, bugs, and bats, but not plants. There's no sun. So it's weird. It's weird. Stalagmites come down from the ceiling. Stalactites are on the ground. Didn't you go to school? Nah. I think it's the other way around. Lynch? Which is it? Lynch? Guys, I don't... I ain't doing so great. Lynch! Lynch, what's wrong? Something inside me. In my chest. Under the ribs. Abbott, get the med stuff out. Oh, Jesus. 
I can see it moving. You gotta cut it out. It's growing. Do it, Abbott. Okay. Keep as still as you can. Ah! Get it out! Get it out! It's like a fibrous growth. Real tough. It's tangled around the ribs. Bloody hell, it's got my arm! The lungs are full of it. Lynch? Lynch, are you still with us? That's not survivable. Stand down, Abbott. We can't just... We can, and we will. We got a biological threat. And I got standing orders not to mess with that kind of shit. Leave Lynch and keep going. Ah, oh, hell, the roots are blowing away back. It'll take a bulldozer to wipe it up. We gotta keep going deeper. Then that's what we do. Abbott, pack up your gear. Then move out. Bye, Lynch. The team continues moving through the large gallery. Lopez finds an opening, leading further westward. And the team are again navigating narrow and partially flooded passageways. We gonna talk about that? About what? We just left someone behind. <sighs> Urbanic was right. It didn't look survivable. But Lynch might still be alive. Not for long. You saw it too, right? Half of the chest cavity was full of that stuff. Wood or roots or whatever. I thought you guys were soldiers. Never leave one behind. All that stuff? That's regular military. Most of us trained that way, but when you get assigned to an MTF, you learn fast how the rules change. The kind of things the Foundation sends us against, sometimes it's better not to be saved. Plus, if we bring a critically wounded soldier or body back with us, God knows what it might be infected with. Not saying you gotta like it, but it's the way it is. We got priorities, more important than lives. Even our own people's. I'm glad I'm a C-Class. I hate to break it to you, but you're kind of in the same situation as the rest of us down here. Would you leave me behind? I'd watch you die for a piece of chicken. Screw you. What the hell, Weiss? Gallows you, my mate. We all got a deal somehow. What about those roots or whatever they are? You seen that before? Nope. But then, that's what we work with, right? Stuff no one's seen before. Hold up. We got one more of those plants up ahead. They ones with the fruit or seed pods. Lopez, you got any idea what they are? Never seen anything like that growing underground. You got a few mushrooms and fungi. Nothing like these. Gonna grab one as a sample. I-28 Alpha attempts to remove a seed pod from one of the plants. But it bursts and emits a cloud of spores. <coughs> I-28 Alpha <coughs> breathes in these spores before getting clear. Oh, shit. The recording becomes distorted, and audio data cannot be reconstructed. Hey everyone, it's Pacific here with a quick ad break. And a reminder, ad-free and bonus episodes are available at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. Sign up for just $5 and skip every ad imaginable. And now, back to our show. For the next portion of the mission, I-28 Delta's location is estimated at 500 meters west of Lake Episawa, and between 30 and 40 meters underground. The next recoverable audio occurs 27 minutes later. It didn't see us. What the hell is it? I think it used to be urbanic. 
He breathed in the spores. Did you see what it did to Weiss? God, the whole face was gone. Hey, you haven't been here before, but I have. You think too much about what you just saw, and you'll freeze up. Put it aside and keep going. You can lose your shit over it later, once we're out. We're underground, man. There's no magic rule that says there even is a way out. Doesn't matter. We keep moving until we find an exit, or we die. Because the other option is to curl up and wait for whatever that thing is to find us. And I'm not about that. I don't know if I can do this. Just follow me. Here, take my sidearm. What am I supposed to do with this? Shoot the bad guy. Okay, we move. Try not to breathe in the spores. Try not to breathe? Great. The remaining two members of the underground team move through the passageways, attempting to do so quietly. The sound of something large moving and breathing in the distance can occasionally be heard. Voice stress and breathing pattern analysis indicates the stress, exhaustion, and shock. Wait, this passage is flooded. We gotta go back. I don't think there is any back anymore. Well, it's either that or grow gills. Looks wide enough to swim through. No way. No, no way. Even with a full diving team, I think twice. I think... I think it turns upwards again. Can't tell how far. 20 meters, maybe? You can't judge anything underwater. I know guys who died thinking they could. Oh man, you're shitting me. I'm not dying here. I'm not dying here. Ah, uh, what the hell? Holy... Holy shit. Lopez? Lopez? I-28 Delta continues walking for the next 31 minutes. Okay. This is I-28 Delta. Abbott. I don't know how long I have to go before I find a way out. And I don't even know if there is one. Urbanic, Weiss... And Lynch are gone. And I guess Lopez, too. If anyone is receiving this, I'm turning off recording to save the battery. If I find anything, I'll transmit again. If not, I'm dead. Sayonara, guys. No further data is received for approximately 19 hours. The C-Class Engineering Support Crew carries out a preliminary investigation of the cave entrance, but were under orders not to enter the cave without MTF support. They found evidence that MTF had entered the cave, but none that anyone had exited. After this period of silence, IOTA 28 Delta begins transmitting again. This is IOTA 28 Delta Abbott. I'm down to the lowest light mode on my flashlight, and I have one flare left. I haven't found an exit, obviously. I think I'm a lot lower than I started out, but other than that, I got no idea where I am. Caver wisdom is probably to stay put, but I know you're not going to send anyone to find me, even if someone does hear this. We weren't the first people down here. I found a skeleton a ways back. It looked like it's been down here for decades. It was in dark green fatigues. Looked military. There was a name label on the chest that read, Stenforth. I don't think it's a good omen. Maybe they got lost down here too. I kinda hope so. Is that weird? I'd rather starve here than run into whatever else may have killed the guy. There's a big cave ahead. I don't know how deep it goes. There are plants everywhere. The ones with the seed pods and 
others like huge ferns, bugs like maggots, the size of my forearm, and these beetles in all bright colors. It's humid and close, way too warm. If there's anything toxic like those spores from before, then I've already got lungfuls of it. And there's a pulse, like something huge breathing. I can't hear it. It's more of a, a feeling in my head. Well, here goes, here goes. It's, it's, oh my God. It's a worm, it's a worm. It's the size of the goddamn Red October. It has so many eyes, so many eyes. Its mouth is opening. Who the hell are you? The transmission is cut off and does not resume. After 48 hours without further communication from the team, the C-Class support personnel sealed the cave entrance with concrete and filled in the channel they had dug, refilling the lake. Foundation personnel blocked all access to Lake Apisawa under the cover story of an amoebic meningitis outbreak. These measures are to remain in place until a more permanent containment for SCP can be put in place. The name Stenforth does not come up while cross-referencing other Foundation files. There's no record of a military operation into the caves, though there was a military base near the lake in the 1950s. If another organization investigated the Shibbets Vale anomaly, there is no evidence of it, except for the skeleton found by IOTA 28 Delta. A description of SCP cannot be given to any degree of accuracy because only a single verbal account of it exists. Going by the final transmission from IOTA 28 Delta, SCP at least partially resembles a worm of enormous size. The last words of IOTA 28 Delta, however, imply the presence of another entity, or the transformation of the existing one. Come in. Good evening, Agent Gallio. I'm a researcher. I'm not an agent anymore. As of 40 minutes ago, that is no longer true. I'm being reactivated? I am empowered to speak on behalf of the O5 Council. They have been very appreciative of your sterling work here as a researcher and wish to utilize both those skills and your experience in the field. You're already familiar with the case of SCP... <laughs> Did anything strike you as unusual about it? Other than the obvious, of course. Yeah, the background. The Foundation became interested in Shibbet's Vale on the lake because of anomalous activity in the area. But there's nothing in the mission records about what those anomalies were. Kind of strange, given that anomalies are what we do. Very perceptive, Agent Gallio. The O5 Council would like those blanks filled in, too. The data we have suggests Shibbet's Vale has a long history of very strange things. But the details appear to have been lost to a computing error. Before we can fully contain SCP, the Foundation needs the whole picture. Your assignment is to report back to the O5 Council on all anomalous events associated with Shibbets Vale. Go back as far as you can. Am I answering to O5 on this? You will be reporting to either me or to another individual empowered to speak on the behalf of the O5 Council. I guess that's as close as anyone gets. The data you find will be Level 5 classified and collected under the codename Project Serapis. Access to other Foundation sites and personnel will be granted to you if the O5 Council deems it necessary. You may have to deal with interests outside the Foundation. Discretion is expected. I get it. Do it alone, do it quiet, leave no trace. Just like old times. The world has changed since you were last out there. But some things will always be the same. Strange things will happen, the Foundation will contain them, and the people who owe us everything will never know. And men like me don't get a choice in the part we play. The Council will be waiting on your results. 
Sleep tight. Aren't you gonna wish me good luck? If you're relying on luck, Agent, you're in the wrong job. This week's episode was possible thanks to the support of our patrons. Over the last month, we've had over 50 new patrons. Uh, so here are just 25 of our incredible new patrons, including Kerchu, Not Fully Housebroken, Redacted, Zamilia, Colin J. Neron, Donald Dowin, The Reigns, Ike Piers, Cardinal, Gregory Aquillo, the Free Minecraft State of Karn, Ezra Asquith, Wolverstone, Samuel Mayhofer, Monica Shakley, Justin Richter, Lord Rancid, Himberfalter, Joey Bingman, Joseph Petrus, Taryn and Charlie, Henry Prestige, Morose Larkin, ATD, Jamie Peach, John Welker, Berg Sardoff, and Voikora. Thanks, guys. Your support means the world, and it allowed us to make this entire 12-episode miniseries. Project Serapis was written by Ben Counter. Galio was John Grills. Abbott was David Dark. Urbanek was Russ Moore. Lynch was Eric Kemp. Weiss was Ben Counter. Lopez was Rissa Montanez. O5 Rep was Alyssa Park. Our line editor was Daisy McNamara, and our sound designer was Dana Creesman. All of our music is done by the incredible Tom Rory Parsons, and I'm your showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah. Our producers are Tom Owen and Brad Miska, and this is a bloody disgusting podcast. <laughs>